Hello, my friends. As promised, I want to give you a more formal version of the power of positive social media and how to make social media a positive force in your life. In the world of the news, we know the news is a fear delivery system, and I don't believe that social media is far from that, especially when in irresponsible hands. I pressed record after I basically said a prayer and just said, Lord, help me deliver some truth here. And I hope to do that. Uh, before I get going, uh, someone asked me what was the cigar that I, that I had the other night. And I did find the ring for it here. Let me just tell you what it is, just to be accurate. A Republica Dominicana uh, Galera, G-A-L-E-R-A. So there you go. That's it right there. Can you see that? I never had that before. That was sent to me by my first girlfriend that I ever had. I was 13 years old, 1973 we met, and we dated all through uh, high school. And she sent me a bunch of cigars. Um, probably last summer, something like that. And and I just finished the pack just now. And that came from a, a cigar shop in Salem, Oregon. So that was kind of cool. Uh, tonight I'm having a, this is called a uh, wafer cigar. By a, It's an acid cigar. Very thin. Like a, almost like a stick of gum. Okay, watch when I turn it this way. See that? Can you see that? And it has that magnificent acid cigar uh, infused aromatic kind of thing going on. It's, it's not for everybody, but I like it. And it's quick. So let me just light that up. Take a little puff. What time is it now? Okay, I still have time before I go to bed. Huh. Nice. Gosh. So nice. So nice. You know, I've got everything from a torch to a just a regular butane to a I forget what these are called. This is a, obviously not the real thing. It's a replica that I really like. And this is a vintage uh, Zippo. This is Rolling Thunder Tires. This is probably from the 70s, I'm guessing. But, you know, purists say, never light a cigar or a pipe with this or that. It's like, whatever. A non-technical cigar lesson. Let's talk about the power of positive social media why it's important, how to make social media a positive force in your life rather than a source of um, anxiety or should be a good thing, right? It should be a good thing. You Like for those that still watch television, many of you don't because of my urging to turn the box off. There's a reason why they call it the boob tube, right? But you turn on the TV and you watch shows that you like, okay? But when you go to social media, you end up being a voyeur of a lot of garbage because you can keep your distance from it, but it does affect you. And there's two types of people on social media. There's voyeurs and exhibitionists. What are you? Are you there to show something? Are you there to display something that you are not in real life? Or are you a onlooker, a voyeur, a lurker? And those are hard questions to answer, honestly. They really are. So how to make, a, uh, how to make social media a positive force in your life? Number one, set your intentions. Why do you post what you do? And why do you watch the things that you do? I'm going to be asking a lot of questions here. Why do you post the things that you do? Why do you watch the things that you do? 
And like I said in the past, Twitter is a ghetto. Twitter is an absolute ghetto. It's a cesspool. YouTube, which you are watching this on right now, is also a shithole. It reminds me of a city that has a few nice sections, like when I think of Philadelphia. If I have guests come into town and I want to take them into Philadelphia, I know just the parts of Philly that I want to take them to, which is only about 20% of the city. 80% of the city is a 20%, a good 20% isn't enough for me to regularly go into Philly, although I've worked in Philadelphia for many years, took the train into work. I have no desire to go into Philadelphia for anything. That's why there's so many great conventions, conferences, symposiums out in the suburbs. I live four miles outside of Philadelphia. And still, the people that come out of Philadelphia, there's a Philly attitude that I can't stand. So, you know, YouTube is the same way. There's some nice sections of YouTube, but most of it's a shithole. It has become that way. Between the commie, weird terms of use, and then the strange people that are on YouTube. Uh, people that you wouldn't want as your neighbors. Okay? So number one, set your intentions. Number two, let go of the negative. Maybe it's time to clean up your social media. For instance... I was suspended off of Twitter, not for saying anything rude, but for telling the truth. So that happened in January. I don't miss it at all. I don't miss Twitter at all. Twitter is a ghetto. It is a complete shithole. It's a place for flexing. It's a place for false bravery, keyboard warriors. And uh, it's, a, it's a great place for snipers to hang out. But nothing substantial ever comes out of uh, Twitter. I had... Uh, is it eight? I forget. 18,000 followers. Some of you remember. 18,000 followers. That's how much I'm trying to get, you know, get Twitter out of my memory. 18,000 followers gone one day. Yeah. So, poof, gone. I went over to Gab. I think I have about 14,000 followers on Gab right now. And I'm happy with that. Instagram, about another 14,000. Uh, shithole tube. Uh, 163,000 followers. Facebook, my Facebook professional page called the George Bruno Experience. That's probably about 5,000. So, yeah. Let go of the negative. Maybe it's time to clean up your social media. Give yourself permission to unfollow, hide, or block people. Nobody ever won anyone over with an argument on social media. Never happened. Name calling, th rock throwing. It's a bad look, and it's really bad messaging for anyone or any organization to do that, period. I don't care if you want to call them hit pieces or negative or exposés or exposing or the truth about this. That You know, weak people are moved by things like that. So I, my 60-something my 60 years of wisdom says if you want to have a solid following and not a, a bunch of reactionary little monkeys, little boys... Uh, you want to develop a solid following. Like, a, you know, it's better to have a thousand true fans than 10,000 wishy washy emotional little snipers. You know what I'm saying? So give yourself permission to unfollow, hide, or block people. It'll be the best thing you can do. I got rid of my personal Facebook and haven't looked back. I unfriended every single human being. And I had 5,000 people, went down to 3,000, then 2,500, 2,000, 1,500. And then I was down to like 250, and then I just said, you know what? Screw it. Everyone's gone, including family. Poof. I don't want to know anything about anybody anymore. Not interested in eavesdropping, lurking, or being part of any, any of the bullshit with anyone. And that's part of cutting ties with friends and family. And, uh, you know, prior to Facebook in, what, 2008, the word, fr remember friend... Do you remember when friend actually meant like someone that it was someone that you knew? Like a friend was actually someone who you hung out with. That was a friend. And then Facebook, you know, the people that you connected with were called friends. They weren't just followers. They were friends. And, you know, if you lose a Facebook friend, did you really lose a friend? I don't think so. So I got rid of everybody and I'm slowly just going to, you know, I was doing some research. Unfortunately, you can't have a professional Facebook page without having a personal Facebook page. 
So I'm stripping the personal page, you know, just down to the bare bones and with nothing, just so I can keep my professional page up. So my social media will be 100% professional. And when I say professional, it's to make money for my family. Yes, I'm confession. I'm doing it for the money. Like that's a bad thing. Okay. I'm doing it for the money. It's part of what I do for a living. So don't feel bad about that. But if you shit talk and lurk uh, for a living, um, rethink it. It's never too late to make a turn and use social media as a positive force in your life. And that's what this is all about tonight. Number three, make attempts to connect with people in person versus just social media. There were people that I had uh, arguments with and disagreements with that turned into like, like shit talking matches. And I mean, stuff, stuff that I was saying and other people were saying online were things that they would never say to my face and things that I would never say to their face as a 60 something, you know, here I am over 60 years old telling a, you know, a 35 year old guy, oh yeah, say it to my face, mother, you know, that's, that's the definition of insanity right there. Okay. I should be teaching the young men, not challenging them to a fight. So, but I found myself doing stupid things like that because you get brave, you get puffed up. And uh, sometimes you get too brave for your own good online. I don't want to be at odds with people, I'm just not interested in it. One has to do the reaching out. And I've always said, uh, someone has to do the reaching out, it might as well be you. And I will lead the way. I'm going to lead by example because I don't want to be at odds with anyone. I really don't. If I'm at odds with people, it's because of something they are doing, not because of something I'm doing. And I can sleep with a clear conscience at night. So make attempts to connect with people in person versus friends, you know. Maybe a good old fashioned phone call would help. Uh, number four, schedule or limit your social media time. You know, you can actually tell when some people wake up and go to sleep because that's when the shit posting starts. You can tell they stop. They went to sleep at two in the morning because the last tweet was at or whatever. You know, I, I, I can't tell what's going on on Twitter anymore. Thank God. Uh, you know, when the shit posting stops at 2 a.m., but you know, they wake up at like 10 or 11 when, the, when all the shit posting starts. And I was tired of like looking at that weird, that weird phenomenon. You know, for a guy that goes to bed at eight o'clock and gets up at four, I'm already weird enough as it is. I'm already the biggest buzzkill party pooper in the world. So I know when, because I am open to marriage, the woman that I meet certainly better be comfortable with that. I'm not changing. She's going to need to be comfortable with me going to bed early. So maybe she'll see the benefits of going to bed early. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see how that goes. No phones at uh, dinner or dates. Mm -mm. Since when did checking your phone become a thing? Let me just fire up the cigar here. When did checking your phone become a thing? I remember one of the last dates that I had, this woman was checking her damn phone. Acid waif cigar. Just nice. Just really nice. My thing is this, you want to date, like a coffee date or something. I'm not talking about a, you know my philosophy of dates. Uh, Outback is for the girlfriend, Fleming's Steakhouse is for the wife. In other words, don't, don't be spending a lot of money, guys. When you go on a date with a woman, you'll know, you'll, you'll know enough by just meeting her for coffee. If you go out for a drink, women do this, oh, let's meet for a drink. I'm like, I'm not meeting for a drink. Because I want to see the real you. I don't want to see the you that's influenced by alcohol. And you don't want to see me influenced by alcohol, which means my, you know, my, I get, alcohol is, is chemically a depressant. I know it makes me tired. It doesn't, like, like when people go to parties and they drink up, 
if I, when I was younger and I did that, I'd, I'd fall asleep. I was the guy on the couch snoring, you know, at a party. So I ended up becoming everybody's designated driver. I was the guy that would pick up four people and go to a party or go out to a club or something. That was me, the designated driver. Happy to be so, because I've never had a DUI. I've never had any alcohol issues or anything like that. And uh, it's, it's a great way to live. It really is. But let's go back to phones on dates. Uh-uh. Phones on dates are not about phone calls. Let's get real. It's about social media. It's about somebody liking a post, somebody reaching out to you, texting you. It's not about emergencies. Let's get real. I can see, like, for instance, I have certain people on my phone that can reach me after hours. I have Do Not Disturb, for me, happens at 8 o'clock. Nobody can reach me after 8 o'clock except a, a small group of people who, if there is an emergency can reach me between 8 and 4 in the morning. Other than that, I don't want to hear any alerts. I don't want to hear any dings, any vibration. I want to hear nothing. So you go out with a girl, and she just keeps checking her phone. That's usually the first and the last date, back when I was in that dating game. No phones at dinner, no phones at dates. No phones or social media while working on your PC. Bill Gates created Windows and the concept, the false concept of multitasking, which has been proven to be false. We have two decades now and two generations of people who think they can multitask. You can do one thing well or four things shitty. Your choice. So here's people who have a spreadsheet, a company policy and procedure, a communication window so like on the task bar you got all these things and then there's like instagram facebook you know twitter uh uh just no social media while you're working it just kills your productivity stop lurking start engaging researchers have found that people who connect are generally happier than those who just scroll and lurk one of the great things that you can do is, and I'll share this with you, is that, like, you don't have to have deep, engaging conversations, which are, which is fairly impossible, unless you're a writer, a true writer, an emailer. But a simple congratulations on someone's accomplishment, or if they make something nice, or people love making a dinner and showing it, or their new puppy or kitten or their garden or something, you know, stuff that people post on social media. Uh, rather than just lurking, positively or negatively, you can say, hey, I love that. That's beautiful. Congratulations. Rather than um, just lurking. It's engaging. It's engaging with people. Watching people have conflicts or conversations online is depressing and can contribute to a lack of hope and give most people a free-floating pessimism. Now, I, I am going to go out on a limb here and say most of social media is depressing. I'm not finding a lot of positive stuff. So that's why I would rather have the followers than to be the followee. That's just my philosophy. I'd rather have no people that I follow, but have people follow me. But with that comes great responsibility. So I have made an effort to be more positive in my social media to give hope, positivity, optimism, and of course, my version of sanity, clarity, and reason. If your social media could be described with three words, would it be shit posting, negativity, and pessimism? Yeah. Are you that desperate for interactions that a like, a heart, or a thumbs up uh, makes your day? Like three hearts, three likes? Are you willing to go negative for four likes? Many people are. And you don't even and you don't even know those people. And one of them might be your other account, which is kind of ridiculous. So is it really a positive force in your life? Or is that the fantasy in your head? 
Remember the other night I talked about let go of the fantasy. Let go of the fantasy that social media is adding to your life. Let go. Bye. Bye-bye. And finally, if social media is having a negative impact on your happiness, then a social media emotional audit is in order. Log how you feel when you get off of Twitter, when you get off of Instagram, when you get off of Facebook. At the end of an evening of watching certain videos, actually, how do you feel? And I fell into that trap, holy crap, with a lot of men's videos that have just gone so negative. It's just like, ugh, yuck. You know, if I want to go to a fight, I'll actually go to a real fight, like a boxing match or, you know, UFC. To me, that's a fight. None of this, like, that, 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 that kind of stuff. It's, it's just stupid. It's a bad look. It's bad messaging. And it's just stupid. It's just, it's just really stupid. So, do an emotional audit. How do you feel? That's one of the reasons why, like, when I get done with this video, I'll probably edit it tomorrow, I guess. Maybe tonight, I don't know. No, nah, it's too late for me to do any editing tonight. I'll edit it tomorrow, upload it tomorrow. But what I'm going to do is I like watching camping videos. So I have a pickup truck, and I'm kind of uh, not obsessed, but very interested in, like, these campers that slide onto the back of a pickup truck and then pop up. Not the big ones that make it look top-heavy, but... It's it's only, they look like they're only about six inches higher than the cab. And then uh, literally the, it pops up like another three feet. And then inside there's a cooktop and a little refrigerator and storage and a nice queen size bed and, and this kind of stuff. And I've been just like watching all these camping videos and even tent videos as well. Um, Steve Wallace, W-A-L-L-I-S. I have been addicted to his videos, and I just can't wait for his videos. He's up in uh, Canada, and he does stealth camping, where he will camp in some of the craziest places. Car camping, he goes and rents a U-Haul van and goes camping in that and uh, tries out different tents and uh, blow up, uh, you know, sleeping pads and cots and just trying out different equipment and making dinner and this kind of stuff. And it, it, it can be kind of goofy, but it makes me feel good when I watch it. And I get a chuckle out of it. And he makes me laugh, you know. And I get a good night's sleep. And that's something I do. Or I will read. Mostly my reading is done early in the morning. Uh, late at night I love watching. Not Well, for me, late at night is... Here it is now. It's 7 p.m., I'll be in the sack in in about an hour. By about 10 of 8, I'll be sleeping. Or in bed, by 8 o'clock, I'll be sleeping. But what's fascinating is I'll watch a couple camping videos, and I feel good. The last thing I want to watch is, like, two grown men acting like women, you know, acting like little bitches, you know, exposing each other and all this crap. You know, the people that I have in my life are people that get along. The, the people who are divisive, I've just eliminated, not only virtually, but in real life as well. And the people who know me best know that I live a pretty darn happy life. And I like to keep it that way. And I eliminate anything that I possibly can, whether it be family or friends, especially virtual people. Um, I can nuke them in half a second. So, there's my teaching that's kind of un, uninterrupted and whatever. Even though I did cover this information the other night, I just wanted to do an actual teaching for you. The power of social, positive social media and how to make social media a positive force in your life. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps. I hope you incorporate some of these things. If you need to, watch this again. Take some notes. Write down some bullet points. You'll be fine. You'll be okay. Everything will work out for you. Thanks for watching.